Good morning. Thank you for all coming. Uh, my name is Gregory Thomas. I'm the Federal Director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Uh, next Monday, January 23rd, will mark the sixth anniversary of the 2006 election and subsequently is the date upon which 39 MPs first elected that year will enter the promised land. They will become eligible for their MP pension. Um, these uh, 39 MPs alone, using conservative estimates, no pun intended, uh, are set to collect nearly $31 million in lifetime pension payouts. And the total cost to retire the 41st Parliament, if all of them leave office in 2015, will be $277 million. So, on behalf of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation and our 70,000 supporters across Canada, we're presenting today a full reporting of every MP's pension. Uh, Derek's been uh, slaving away for months on this, just outstanding work. Um, the report contains calculations of all 307 MPs and uh, if they all retire or are defeated in 2015, as well as 2019, uh, the next two federal elections. Uh, our source documents, uh, you can link to them, you get them at taxpayer.com right now and you can link to them uh, from our release. Uh, this is the most recent report from the Treasury Board on the uh, administration of the MP Allowances Act. And this is the actuarial report as uh, the most recent report from the chief actuary of the superintendent of financial institutions. We try hard not to leak a report like this ahead of time. Unfortunately, um, a couple of uh, crew uh, on WestJet got a look at it last Friday when I was going out west for some meetings. It was a bit of a bad scene. They saw their own MP's pension. Uh, there's a lot of ranting and raving. It took a while for folks in the back row to get their coffee, so we do apologize for that. Um, however, what they didn't see and what uh, stunned even us, and frankly, we're a hard crew to surprise, was uh, what we found buried in the fine print of the chief actuary's report. Um, officially, government, or, sh or uh, shall I say, taxpayer contributions to MP pensions work out to $5.80 for every dollar an MP contributes. But in reality, we've discovered it's much worse than that. Taxpayers are contributing over $23 for every dollar an MP contributes to their own pension fund. They're putting more money into the MP pension fund than they're actually paying MPs in salaries every year. Your typical backbencher gets about $157,000. Uh, uh, they, when they contribute, they get 7% uh, of that goes into their pension. So they maybe put about 10, just shy of $11,000 into the pension. Uh, last year, taxpayers contributed $248,000 per parliamentarian to that same fund. The way this has been rigged to pay out so high is all thanks to a law that results in MPs paying themselves a 10.4% annual interest rate on their pension fund, and they've been doing it for years. Uh, the quote-unquote return on this fund is set by cabinet, but it's a phony return on an imaginary investment. MPs' pensions are not invested in the market like the Canada Pension Plan or RSPs. Uh, the government simply passed a decree paying interest to the MP pension fund and at a staggering rate. This outrageous rate means they have basically the best performing pension over 10 years on the planet. By government order, they're doing 60% better than the Canada pension plan over the past 10 years. Um, when the Caisse de Depot uh, dropped 25% after the financial meltdown, these guys were fine. They had a 10.4% return, just like they get year in and year out, year after year after year. So if you look at their last financial statement, 2010, when you combine the massive taxpayer contribution to the MP plan with the 10.4% return the MPs give themselves, taxpayers put $102 million into the MP pension fund, and parliamentarians put in $4.5 million. That means for every dollar an MP or senator puts in, taxpayers put in $23. The chief actuary of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions of Canada blew the whistle on this in 2010. He called it inappropriate. 
Now, when actuaries speak, you know, you, you've all met an, ext an extroverted actuary. He looks at your shoes when he's talking. Um, when actuaries speak, they speak softly. Nobody listens. That's why we're stepping in here. This is a ripoff on a massive scale. The, the chief actuary says the MP pension plan in 2010 had a $175 million excess or surplus, and it's gotten bigger since then. It's probably also the best funded pension plan on earth right now. It's probably the best funded pension plan on earth. Um, now, when, the, when a chief actuary calls something inappropriate, he's really dropping the gloves here. I mean, you know, if he was Brendan Shanahan, he'd be pulling the MPs into the league office. He'd be handing out multi-game suspensions. This is serious stuff. On the other end, uh, people are walking away after six years on the job with a big payout for life, starting at 55, a guaranteed indexed payoff, many of them in the multi-millions of dollars. When they die, their spouse gets 60% of it. If they marry after they leave office, they can split it with their new mate. Their dependent children can keep 20% of it after they go. And in some cases, the money can even go into their estate. We're talking millions of dollars here. It's all in the report. We want to make a larger point here, which is that the Harper government needs to do some very tough things in the next year or two if they're going to keep their election promise and balance the budget. One of those things is looking at the pay and, more importantly, the pensions of all government workers. There's no way the Prime Minister and these MPs can do what they need to do to balance the budget and control spending if they've got their own snouts in the pension trough. They need to lead by example. They need to put Canada ahead of their own personal bank balance. So we're calling on MPs to set an example and close down not just this gold-plated, but this platinum-plated pension plan effective immediately. They need to be the House of Commons, not the House of Royalty. Second, they should create a, an optional dollar-for-dollar dollar matching defined contribution pension plan, much like the new pooled registered pension plans they want all of us to adopt. If it's good enough for Canadians, it should be good enough for our MPs. And thirdly, they need to implement what we're calling the Levine Rule after former Senator Raymond Levine. If any MP or senator is convicted of a crime relating to their office, then they should immediately lose the taxpayer's portion of their pension benefits, even if they resign in disgrace days prior to their conviction, as Senator Levine did. We need to remove all the fraud and larceny from MP pensions. Things need to change fast. It starts today on Parliament Hill. Thanks for your time today. Is there any um, argument that can be made for getting such pensions? When you talk to MPs, they talk about the precariousness of the job, that it's you know a game of Russian roulette. When you get in here, you don't know when you're going to get turfed out. Is there, an, is there any argument? You don't seem to have one, I'm just wondering. Uh, it's tough all over these days if you go into an underground mine. Uh, there are dangers in the job. Uh, people have all walked into newsrooms and they've seen their friends and co-workers sent home uh, you know, without a million dollar or a multi-million dollar payout. Um, these people choose this work. They're paid, uh, they're paid like federal judges uh, for the work they do. And uh, I think you know, a $23 uh, 23 taxpayer dollars for every one dollar in the in the pension plan is just outrageous. I don't think it can be defended by anyone. You had sorry, you had a call 20 years ago under the reformers to to, to change this. In fact, the report's dedicated to the, the three holdouts. Um, do you actually see it happening? Uh, well, the prime minister raised the issue uh, um, yesterday on a on a television interview and. Uh, we're more optimistic than we've ever been. Prime Minister sort of poo-pooed the idea of going after um, civil servants' pension. He was making the argument that uh, to attract good people into the civil service, they needed the incentive of a better pension because often their salaries didn't match, 
match those in the private sector. Um, do you see this is a sign they might be backing off um, going after government pensions because they don't want to go after their own? Uh, I think if, if they fail to go after government uh, pensions, it's because they're afraid to go after their own pensions, and it'll be a sign of weakness uh, for this government. This is a really, really a test of the government's mettle. And what we're seeing is, um, especially at the executive level, uh, hospital executives, university presidents. I think McMaster has four university presidents uh, on full pension. Now, the people uh, see this as a benchmark. Uh, they do five or ten years of service, and then they they organize this multi-million dollar lifetime pension payout. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're, you, you get these slick operators with these clueless volunteer boards, and and federal money pouring into the provinces for health care and education, quote unquote, and it's, it's being uh, wasted on multi-million dollar payouts for slick government operators at the highest level. And it's tough for anyone in, a, in an ordinary government job to look at that and not feel a sense of disgust. And, you know, provinces need to legislate. Uh, uh, it's, not, it's not as bad in the public service of the federal and provincial governments, but you know, these agencies are just out of control and, and they're all taking their example from MPs and senators. How can you compare, like you said, you saw, according to you, it was one of the best pension uh, fund in the world. Uh, if we go like in the civilized world, uh, France, Britain, the G20 or G, uh, G7 or 8, what, can you point to us some of the, can we have a bar barometer of comparison? Sure, well, if you look at the PIMCO bond fund or if, if you look at, uh, at the total return index of the S&P TSX or uh, or the hottest performing international in the pensions. Or parliaments or like politicians. Yeah, no, we, we haven't done a comparative study on that. We should, but Derek? All I would say is that uh, in the wake of the... Well, we know that in the wake of the uh, UK uh, MP expense scandal, uh, pensions there, uh, which are different than Canadian members of parliament, they are at least under the scope there uh, in the wake of, uh, of that particular spending scandal. My understanding is it's not really up to the government, but it would be up to the Board of Internal Economy to decide to choose the pension plan. So how confident are you that this group of individuals who meet behind closed doors, who refuse to have the Auditor General come and look at their books, would make such a change? Uh, you know, putting this off on the Board of Eternal, uh, Internal Economy is an avowal of non-leadership. This, uh, this government was elected, this government has a leader, and they need to take action, and the Prime Minister and the Finance Minister need to show leadership. And as I mentioned, uh, the Prime Minister raised the issue himself, so you know we're confident that it's on its radar. I'd just like to ask about, uh, I'm just looking at your, your schematic here, and I see that uh, in 2009, pensions across Canada took a big hit, but uh, the MP one didn't. Could you just tell us a bit about what happened or did not happen to the MP pension at that point? Yeah, they, uh, they, um, the chief actuary, in his report, he, he, he called this rate of return inappropriate, and he said that it should be closer to five and a quarter percent. This is in 2010. Rates have gone down since then. And, uh, you know, uh, the government knew all about this. Uh, every other Canadian was just having their pension savings savaged. Um, uh, Quebec taxpayers on January 1st, everyone in the Quebec pension plan got dinged on their paycheck because they're trying to fill that, backfill that hole. And uh, MPs uh, just decided they they weren't going to participate in the global financial meltdown, and, and they shoveled $102 million of taxpayer money into their pension plan. So if it was, if they followed the recommendation of five and a quarter percent of the chief actuary, how many taxpayer dollars per MP dollar would then be going in? I would save uh, 30 or 40 million dollars. You've used the 23 to 1 figure. What would that figure be? Would it be half? Uh, no, because they also there's also uh, contributions, uh, employer contributions. Taxpayers are the employer, so um, there's a there's that ratio as well. So we pay we pay five or six times as much as they do into the pension plan as contributions, and then they charge themselves. This, they, they get this return, which is all taxpayer dollars on top of it. So it, this would this would clip. So I'm just wondering, yeah. what is the chief actuary recommending if you put his figures? Yeah, it, it would just... Compared to the 
33 dollar to one figure you're using at the yeah. 10 percent 10.4 percent rate what would the figure be if his recommendations were followed it would still be it'd still be closer to um still be closer to 13 or 14 dollars so if I understand well, their salary is, uh, well, their, their uh, retirement payment is guaranteed by law. And, it, you know, it's a fictional portfolio. It's just like, and we're responsible to. It's a fictional portfolio. It's a fabulous portfolio. If there is a portfolio like that, I'm sure everybody in this room wants to know what's in it. So we can all go buy the same thing. Well, the thing is, um, one of the perks of being an MP is the pension. And as I say, they'd argue that it's the kind of job that, um, you know, you give up your family, you la la la. I mean, I can name it all, but I can just see in your eyes, you're going to say cry me a river, right? <laughs> I mean, do, is there any concern that there wouldn't be as much interest in being a parliamentarian if you took away this perk? Uh, I don't see a shortage of candidates. Um, still there yeah well I, I mean uh, the government of Ontario has a um, has a standard they have a standard uh, Ontario and Alberta uh, both Ontario and Alberta have standard uh, matching uh, retirement savings plans where uh, the taxpayers throw in a buck for every dollar the Ontario and Alberta politicians get and I think uh, you know Allison Redford uh, McGinty you know, we can go down list names of people who serve in those legislatures. They seem just fine. Um, seem, you know, seem on a comparable level with people serving here in Ottawa. Um, just about the way that the MP pension plan is managed. Do they actually invest in anything like no. a conventional plan? They, they don't. They? No, this this return is set by cabinet decree. So it's unlike any other pension plan in that regard. That's they don't. That's, <laughs> they're just taking money out of the coffers on an annual basis. Uh, every quarter. And, and it compounds, so the money they take out at the end of the quarter starts compounding, and then they pay themselves interest on that at the end of the next quarter. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. Is this why you pay $23 as opposed to, like, I thought it was 5 but you're saying with this guaranteed return, it really averages out to um, $23 yeah. from the taxpayers? Yeah, and in fact, and it, and it cannot go down, and it can only go up, and as, as we all discovered during the, uh, during the uh, financial meltdown government be doing about government pensions and uh, is it possible um, we uh, we recommend that uh, for for new hires that they uh, they enroll new employees in the pooled retirement pension plan that they're starting for the rest of us we think that uh, that the model of uh, employers and employees each kicking in on an equal basis into retirement savings plan is fair and and like uh, the Canada Pension Plan or old age security or maternity benefits in this country, you know, these are, these are things that are pretty much universally popular because uh, you're a Canadian, I'm a Canadian, they're Canadians, everybody knows exactly what the deal is, everybody gets treated the same way. You, you get in these, uh, um, uh, you know, schemes, holdovers from the 1970s like the EI plan, the MP pension plan, and uh, these things, you know, drive ordinary Canadians. They, they drive all Canadians. If they're not parliamentarians, they just drive them bananas. And um, if, uh, you know, I think public sector unions would be well advised to focus their attention on, on uh, negotiating the strongest uh, salary package that they can and moving away from all the things that annoy Canadians about government, moving away from the, 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 the sick days and the... And the uh, and the vacation days and the, you know, years of language training and the, and the, and the pension payouts that, uh, that are out of sync with what everybody else is making. So why are you picking on pensions though, just out of curiosity? Like, do you also think the jets should be scrapped or like, is the pension the big bullseye or? Well, um, yeah, we think the, we think the, uh, pension, uh, you know, things are, especially at the executive level, with people who are paid like MPs or more than MPs, with hospital executives, university presidents, um, anybody who's working for a border agency where they have a gullible uh, volunteer board, you know, uh, taxpayers are just being taken to the cleaners all over the country. 
uh, and it's because uh, these guys in Parliament are setting the pace. They're the, they're the worst of them all. Got figures here for some of the new NDP MPs is getting. Oh no, that's severance. Okay, so they don't their pensions don't kick in until. Uh, yeah, they have to get reelected yeah. once. So just on how it's going to work, do you think the government has to signal they're serious about this, and then the board is just going to go along with the government's line because it's a consensus body. Yeah, I mean, if I mean the the prime minister leads the country, he has to lead his caucus, and the same goes for the leaders of the NDP and the and the Bloc and the and the Liberals. I mean, this would be a great way for Bob Ray to demonstrate that uh, uh, he's the new Bob Ray. He's not the Bob Ray that we all remember from uh, from the nineteen nineties. And uh, make uh, make adjustments that are heavier on uh, the federal servant with regards to their pension, and they don't touch the MBs. That's completely unacceptable. Yeah, there's no way they can do anything about pensions unless they start in their own backyard. And how do you see it um, working? Uh, the crop that's there now. I mean, they're they all came in with these benefits, you know, assured to them. So would it be the new crops, like the next election, that it would all be cancelled and something new would come along, or what? Yeah, rem remember the uh, uh, the uh, over. I mean, they almost unanimously the the original uh, fifty two got elected on a promise to scrap the MP pension plan completely, and then many of them walked away with multi million dollar pensions. Nobody talks about that, and nobody honors. Um, the three people that we listed in our report, they gave, they walked away from massive payouts on principle because that's what they said they would do. Uh, Lee Morrison, Preston Manning, and Werner Schmidt. They're f forgotten names, but they're sitting. You know, they actually put the country ahead of their ahead of their bank balances. Sorry, uh, my colleagues probably know the answer to this, but um, <coughs> you qualify for the MP pension if. It's not, it's not based on years, it's based on how many times you're elected? Uh, well, it's based on six years, so you have to get elected twice. Four, four times, depending on the situation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to, uh, Derek's going to write a check uh, on behalf of all Canadians to the 41st Parliament, $277 million. Okay, you guys want to get off to the yeah, table? Uh, Will they stand up, please, while we do this? Can you explain it while you're writing it? This is the cost uh, to... Uh, you can yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay? This would be the cost of retiring every single member of Parliament sitting in, uh, sitting in the House of Commons today if uh, they all retired at the time of the next set election date in uh, October 2015. That's the whole parliament. That is a pension and severance of every current uh, sitting member of parliament if they were all to uh, retire uh, in October 2015 at the time of the next uh, scheduled federal election. <laughs> 